Hey everyone, I wanted to show you how to handle inline images and place your own via anchored text. So here we go. Here's my emoji text and you can see that I've got this inline image and I don't know if there's actually any text behind it. Yep, there sure is. Uh, and so I want to fix that and the first clue as to how or why this is behaving the way it is is this little anchor up here. As I mentioned in class, this is what's known as an anchored image. And so before I actually fix it, I'll show you the different types. Now, when you hover over this little anchor, you can uh, hold down shift and then click on it and drag it to a new point in the text. Uh, I don't actually want to do that, but it's helpful if you place an image and accidentally anchor it to the wrong area. So you can fix it that way. Or you can option click that little anchor, which is what we want to do here and it's going to pull up the anchored object options dialog box, this uh, modal, and um, right now it's as an inline, and I think ultimately that's what I'm going to leave it as, but just to show you how it behaves differently, I'm going to click custom, and I'll click preview, and you can see it moves, I'll click OK, um, and now when I move this away, you can see exactly where it's anchored to, and the nice thing about this, as I mentioned in class, is that, for instance, um, now, you should never be uh, modifying things really, for the most part, with paragraph returns, but you can see, just to quickly illustrate, that it follows the insertion point in the text. So if you insert a um, page break or any other kind of um, breaking character or something, it'll just follow that around, which is really, really handy. So I actually want to put this back in line, and so if I want to do that, I just option click it again and change the position to in line, and click OK. So what's ultimately going on here is that um, it's a little complicated as to why InDesign does it this way, but as an inline image, it's trying to squeeze us into a, whatever our letting is set to, and right now our letting is set to 12, and so it's only holding a single leaded line for this image and um, treating it in some level like text and but then also like an image because it's overflowing and going over the existing text kind of a mess so what we're gonna do uh, if it's treating like text is we're going to change the leading and in order to do that I'm gonna put my cursor in here and again this is weird that it would allow us to highlight the image as though it were text but we're gonna use this text tool or sorry the type tool with the shortcut of T and we're just gonna carefully highlight this and only this so what I'm doing is putting my cursor in there and just like I would highlight text I'm dragging up on my trackpad to grab that and then to change it temporarily locally I can come over here to the character panel and click on the letting and switch this to auto and by doing that it's gonna make as much space as we need to accommodate this however like any local formatting if I change the paragraph style that it's attributed to for instance if I were to highlight all of this and then go to paragraph style and I think in this case um, this is a caption, but just to show you what happens when I change it, I click body copy and then clear the override. It goes back, uh, again, because I locally styled that. And so what I'm actually going to want to do, and again, super weird that this is how you would handle an image uh, through a paragraph style, but I'm going to do just that. I'm going to create a new paragraph style. I'm going to call it inline images. And the only thing I'm going to change about this, or the only thing I care to change or verify, is that the letting is set to auto. And so what I'm going to do is go back, put my cursor in there, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to change this to inline images. And now, this has the paragraph style of body copy, this has the paragraph style of, well in this case, body copy, but we can change that to caption. And we're all set. If I wanna affect the space above or below it, I'm gonna to wanna to do that through inline images. 
through my indents and spacing. So if I want to throw maybe, we'll say right now, a half leaded line before, so six points, and then a half leaded line after, which will take up a full leaded line. That's where I do that. And then finally, I can treat it like any other image. I can adjust the text frame and then select the object within it and I can fit the object to the frame proportionally, fill it that way, and then select the frame and shrink the frame to the size of the content. And there we go. Here it is, all in line and properly spaced. The next thing I want to do is show you all how to add an image, place an image, and then convert it to anchored text. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, if you'll bear with me, let's come down to, I believe it is number 13 on the EndNote marker right around here. And I'm going to come over to the original text. I'm going to find the image I want to insert. And this may not be the best example because it's so large and it's likely going to involve a page break, but in any case, uh, I'll do it uh, through a text, anchored text um, or anchored object. So I first need to download this. I'm going to right click and save image as. I'll leave this the same title. And I'll click OK. And you can see this is inserted between 13 and the start of this paragraph. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to insert it um, right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit Command D and find that image. Click Open and here we go. I'm not going to make this huge right now just so it doesn't go too terribly crazy. And click OK. And then I'll move this kind of slightly over here. Now this blue box where you would uh, normally see the anchor, if it were in fact an anchor, is the key to turning it into an anchor. So I'm going to click and drag this into the spot right here. And you can now see that it's uh, anchored to that spot. And then I'm going to option click it and place an inline image above. Click OK. And this is where it's helpful. You can see I accidentally inserted it between the B and Y and by. And so I'm going to shift, click, hold, and then move it to the outside. And I'm also going to put my cursor in there. Right click. And then highlight that and give it the inline images paragraph style. I'll make this quite a bit bigger and then I'll fill this and then once again fit my frame to that and now we have placed an inline image and functionally there's not a lot of difference between this. So this is how you deal with them when they're uh, inherited through some sort of Microsoft Word doc or Google doc, however you might have gotten your file. And this is how you place them in line from a source uh, that you might have gotten from a director or um, online, something like that. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope that helps. Thanks.